<clears throat> Where's that music? There we go. Good evening, everybody. Um, the man on the, on the other end of this phone is not Pam Powers. It's me, David Soldani. I'm filling in for her because she, uh, well, she is unable to join us tonight. And with me right now, I have Miss Akbi Khan. Welcome and good evening to you, ma'am. Thank you um, for your warm welcome, and good evening to you, too. Happy to be here, as always. Are you ready for some really ripping soap talk? I <laughs> sure am, always. You are? I don't know. We have a month to go out to, to bruise over, and I'm not even sure if I can remember a month. <laughs> I think you can because you have like, memory of an elephant or whatever. Are an elephant supposed to have good memories? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I seriously can't. Like, I'm going to have a hard time remembering. I'm trying to think how far back. <laughs> I know. So I'll try. You also prompt me. But, um, yeah. Let me see. Well, we're trying to stick to the 15 minutes per soap thing, so we better get started with right. D&D. Okay, we can get started, and um, I'll always bring... We have another guest coming to join us. Her name is Carolyn, and I'm hoping she's making it with us tonight. Um, and I will bring her in as soon as she comes on. So why don't, Akbi and I, why don't we get started? Okay, Shall great. We? All right, Bold and the Beautiful, we're going to start with. And if you want, throw in the Emmy nominations. Oh, right, yeah. Um, I haven't seen I, them all, but we can go over them as we could do them. Right, yeah. Um, I, I think it was yesterday, no, day before yesterday's episode of Bold. Uh, um, I wanted to call her Eve, God. She even <laughs> had me under, me under her spell. Uh, yeah. Quinn said, I wish this wish this could go on just a little, why can't we just go on like this a little longer? And I was like, I agree. I was liking the Adam and Eve thing, and I liked those two together so much. And they I mean, I knew right. I also wanted it to get, it was like a, you know, some conflict I was having. Like, I wanted it to go on, but I also knew that it couldn't and wanted, her, like, the denouement, or whatever you want to call it, to happen so we could see what's going to happen to Quinn. Now, of course, she's run off with Deacon, which is crazy. Um, so I know. I'm loving that storyline. Uh, and I always was a huge Quiam fan, even though I'm, like, in the minority there. But I love them together. I think Sam was also into Quinn and Liam together. But, I mean, I think that the, I'm not saying that this is that I've heard anything concrete. I'm not, this is not a spoiler. It's just my theory that she's going to be pregnant. Um, and I think that's good because they'll kind of continue the storyline basically forever um, because they'll have to be tied to each other and in each other's lives. So, I mean, you I think she is? Think of, you think I she is? I have this feeling that somehow, and I don't know how they're going to keep her out of prison, if they are at all. Maybe they'll have a prison storyline for her, like Victor or something. But oh, I think, we, I was wondering what happened to her, but... I think I think you know um on the lighter side like I I like when this was starting to happen I always made light of it by saying it works if I have a ginger ale. Right. The ginger ale works. <laughs> right. And and the story did grow on me after a while even though you know 
I knew this part was coming. Right. Uh, and I'm, I just about applauded when they locked her in the closet. You know, I thought that was a little much. I think they could have just called the police <laughs> right back. I, I know. Was... Maybe they should have. That, I think I, I don't know. Oh. Maybe were they looking for filler? I know. Yeah, I guess so. But that reminds me. I find it totally bizarre that still up until yesterday's episode, because I don't. I watch the one that comes on Pop Channel at night. The, um, right. They have not called, taken Liam to the emergency room. I and mean, the first thing why it should have done is drive him to the emergency, emergency room. He could have had Steffi meet I there. I mean, Liam there, whatever. If he's, you know, whatever. It's just, and still, they're like, lay down. They're doing what exactly what Quinn did. They're like, lay down on the couch, have some soup, get some rest. It's like, uh, no, get to the doctor and get a CAT scan or MRI, whatever. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, Do something. You got to. He has to go in. He needs to go in. I mean, he's. I mean. Worse things can happen. I mean, this could be like just a minor glitch where he comes back. He could, he could automatically go back out. Right. In you know, in real terms, you don't know how long that's going to last unless he's looked after. And right, and, and and you don't know. Yeah, you don't know what's going to happen again. You don't know what it's safe for him to do. What it's not safe for him to do. Especially since the memory isn't, it's coming back, but it's not totally back. I mean, it's a soap, so they play fast and loose with the concept of amnesia anyway, but um, I'd be very concerned. And I'd be concerned about him. I'd be like, take me to the, um, excuse my language, doctor. Like, I need to see someone. <laughs> or call someone to the house. I, don't, I mean, if they have some aversion to going to the hospital. And the cops were being all weird, like eating a sandwich and not taking anything seriously. I don't know what was up with that. <laughs> no, um, I'm trying to think where that comes from. Uh, that is so familiar, though. I've seen that only in, um, you know, that whole thing with the cops reminds me that they could be just bad cops. Right, not taking it you know, seriously. You know, I'm thinking that they're not taking they're not taking their job seriously, and they don't care, right. you know, what's going on or something like that, or they're on the take. One of them, you know, or they think the story is so outlandish that they're like, uh huh, sure, you were kept here against uh, your will. How you brought me in for? <laughs> right. So <laughs> maybe maybe that's how Quinn's going to escape. You know, capture for a while is because the cops aren't taking it seriously. I have no idea. But also the the fact that she got Deacon to go along with it is like he must have hit his own head pretty hard too. Yeah, somehow <laughs> he picked up an axe like he was ready to kill her, and then five seconds later in the same scene he's like, "Okay, I'll go on the lamb with you." So um. Oh, and so. It was so. Well, I was surprised that he came back so soon. I know. I thought. I mean. That, I, I know. I mean, right him. there. I was expect. Uh, well, maybe not soon. I was expecting him sooner. Maybe. I thought That's maybe. What, yeah. He, yeah. Go on. What do you think? I thought you he expect- was going to show up. I thought that he was going to show up at um, Steph, uh, Steffi and Wyatt's wedding. Because it is a soap wedding, after all, and I can't, like, go yeah. off without an interruption. I thought he was going to say, wait, no, Liam is alive, and blah, 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 but that's not it. I thought oh, it was yeah. Hilarious that he, I thought it was hilarious that he had that seaweed around his neck when he came in, like, as if he had just, like, crawled out of the ocean. <laughs> I was like... Yeah. <laughs> I know. Right, right out of the cartoon. <laughs> right, totally. I, thought, I, lo- I loved it. I was... I was back. I was back in the day in the Saturday morning cartoons, watching Sigmund and the Sea Monster. <laughs> That's what it flashed to me. I can't. Totally. <laughs> I, um, I, I just. 
Okay, do you want to... Yeah. Um, right. No, no, I was just thinking what Rick else... Rick and Maya? Oh. Rick and Maya, um, you know, I thought it was good that Maya yesterday was giving... I, like I said, I haven't seen today's episode, but the, she had a little talk with Bende. And I thought it was unbelievable, and I'm so glad that Nicole was finally laying into Sasha. And I mean, I would have been way more harsh with her than Sasha than Nicole was being with her. But I can't believe she was like, she had the gall to be like, "Why can't you just be happy for me?" Uh, maybe because I'm trying to do my sister a favor, and you stole my boyfriend, and <laughs> out of the blue you came to town, stole my boyfriend, and like. You want me to be happy for you? Like, she's out of her mind. But it is. She is delusional, and she thinks he's in love with her. I know. I'm so glad that he told Nicole, you know, I'm not in love with her, and I will always be in love with you and all that stuff. But he's just a, like, I have no respect for him anymore. Like, he fell for, he not only dumped Nicole for being pregnant, but the pregnancy is going to be over. And then... Why can't he just wait it out? And then, no. I mean, I can't believe he fell for Sasha's, you know. I know. I mean, seductions and whatever. And so I just think he's weak, for lack of a better word. Well, we did have someone on the, uh, someone is trying to come in. And then the oh. call dropped. Oh, it must be Caroline. Well, hopefully. So uh, while we're in the Rick and Maya, um, we have an Emmy nom for Jacob Young. Oh, right, yes. And I did not get to see, I did not get to see his reel yet. I'm still looking at reels. Mm-hmm. Did you get to see his reel yet? I didn't, and um, I read about some of the stuff he submitted, and it sounded like it was pretty good stuff. Um, and I have a whole new respect for him as an actor. Not that I ever thought he was any just like that or anything. I always thought he was good, but he, you know, I was a huge All My Children fan, and he's a very different right. character than uh, AJ, and he does such a good job. He did such a good job, and hopefully will do again when AMC is resurrected, thanks to the SOS movement. Um, but he does a great job as Rick, too. So, um, I mean, there's so many people in his category. I just don't know who to, like who I'm rooting for in any of the categories, basically. It's hard. I'm like the most I didn't see them all yet, but I think, is he the only one um, from B&B that's under-supporting? Uh... I think it is this Carolyn. I'm going to see Scott if this Clifton is Carolyn. is nominated. Is he nominated for supporting? I'm not sure. I can look it up. Um, but... Hello, welcome to Take Two Radio. Who do I have? Carolyn. Hi. Hi. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> How are you doing? How's it going? We're doing good. Good, good. 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 We're going on. We, we're we're doing one Emmy nomination right now. Okay. Mr. Jacob and, Young is talking about him. Okay. Because we're on B and B. Okay. So, Ockby's going to tell us what he submitted. Oh, okay. I don't. Sounds, sounds good. I don't know. I just. I don't remember. Like I said, I've not the greatest memory. So I read this article about the scenes that he submitted, and he was kind of vague anyway, but, so I don't know what it was. I think it was, um, I have, I think it was his stuff from when Maya came out to him, and maybe some other stuff, I'm not sure, but like I was saying to um, David Carroll, and he's, I think he's a really good actor, and especially since I had been watching AMC All My Children for so long, and, um, I've been watching Golden Beauty for less time, so to me, I still always think of AJ. But he's really, um, I haven't grown very, yeah. And he does both characters who are very different. Um, 
so well that I think that he would I mean, be very deserving if he won. And I think it was great that he was nominated. So we'll see what happens with that. Oh, 15 minutes. Next up. Okay, next up. Okay, General Hospital. Where do you want to start? Okay. The morphine? Oh, Mr. F- Dr. Finn. What? You yeah. know, I was talk. Oh, I was talking with Pam on Twitter, and we were like, "Okay, is he? It seems like it must be morphine because he has such an intricate little pack, like bag yeah. or whatever that he carries with him. Um, and he, we haven't seen him like, you know, copping on the corner for heroin. So he must have some terminal illness or whatever. Um, but I think that's. I love the character, um, the lizard, his character, how he's so different from all his other characters that he's played, um, even the two on General Hospital, and I think he's doing a really good job, and they're doing a great job of making us want to know more about him. Like, what is what is his whole backstory? Is he yeah? Um, is he ill? You know what? You know. So I think, and I yeah. Go on. My thinking is. Um, that I'm wondering if he's got the same thing Tracy has. Oh, interesting. If he's yeah, so think... intuitive about what she has and went and treated him, and then I'm wondering if his is a little more severe and he's in pain and he needs that for pain. Right. I don't know if you caught today's. I haven't seen today's, no. Okay. Well, at the end of today's, Mm -hmm. Carly finds him passed out after he's taken his dose. Uh Uh-oh. Yep. That's how they left him. Yeah, he was looking pale, and he's Uh missing because he needs, he had to be at a conference. Uh, Um... With Doctor O, mm-hmm. if he wanted oh, to come in, it was yeah. So he's missing that. Tracy wants him on board, and you know he. I guess he's not feeling right. So he went home to shoot it up, mm-hmm. and um, when they left him, he was passed out at the end of today. And Carly finds wow, him because. Okay. Because he wanted a wake-up call so he could make that meeting. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah, wonder if he's overdosed. I, wonder. I mean, I wonder if he's overdosed and then if that's the case. I can guarantee you he's going to be... I come from a family of doctors, and I can... The old saying, doctors are the worst patients, is very true. And he is definitely, because he's so, like wants everyone to just leave him all alone all the time. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, if he, if they're like, what is, what happened? What did, like, why were you passed out? If he's going to tell the truth, if he's going to try to get out of it. Because if he tells them, they're going to be like, first of all, Dr. O's going to be like, you absolutely can't work at the hospital. And then second of all, they're going to, like, try to send him to rehab, you know, after they get him stabilized and stuff, so... It'll be right. interesting to see what happens tomorrow, that's for sure. Um, it will be. That you haven't seen so, today yet. Oh, that was today. Right, yeah, I haven't seen today. Um, okay, what else you looking at? Oh, I was looking at um, the supporting actor nominees, and Jacob Young is not in competition with anyone else from Bold. He's the only one oh. for supporting actor from Bold. He's the only one. Okay. Yeah, I guess everyone was kind of thinking Bridge was going to be nominated, but he's not. And uh, maybe, oh, wait, maybe he's nominated for actor. No, he's not. No. Anyway. No, no bold no bold and outstanding lead. I'm a huge Rebecca Buddy fan, and I'm a huge Rachel Hayden whatever fan. Um... She's a powerhouse. Yeah, she really is. I I just tweeted the other day. I think she should have her own soap 
they turn on just Rebecca Bud. <laughs> just her. <laughs> but I do walk around General Hospital, though, so I wouldn't want her to go anymore. But um, I think she is amazing. And I'm kind of disappointed that this story suddenly took a couple of days ago. I guess it was not, was it yesterday or the day before, when she just what? is like, like at first, you know, after the first night they spent together, after she revealed that she was blackmailing him and was staying in the wedding, and then they spent the night together with knives on hand in case the other tried to hurt the other, it's like, then she was like, well, I just want your money. And I was kind of disappointed because I love them as a couple, and I was hoping yeah, that they would, you know. I do, too. First I would like her Nick yeah. with. And I'm surprised. But who knows? It's a soap. Anything can happen. So maybe anything can happen, right, Carolyn? Yes, if anything, anything can happen. happen in soap opera. Soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but, um, okay. What is some other story? The what do you maybe? like? Um, did Alexis handle Christina properly? Um, I think she did. I think, I mean, eventually, I would have been really upset if my mom had gone to Harper, but since it went so well, I was glad. And I don't know why they're assuming, Sonny is very loving and accepting of his kids. I don't know why they keep being like, oh, my God, when Sonny signs out, it's going to be you know, the yeah, worst don't thing tell ever. Him. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, know why they're asking. They're afraid that he might do something. Right, especially, like, since he did that weird thing where he had Max go to the school and ask around about um, Parker and, yep. the, you know, Christina. I thought that, I mean, that was weird. But, like, I don't think he's going to have a problem with it. He's, like, a, he's living in 2016. I, he's a, yeah, yeah, go on. And she's not, and she's not totally sure where she stands either. That's the that's right. the most unique point about this entire story is that she's not sure where she is yet. Right. Maybe that's just a fluke. Right. You know, because mm-hmm. she, she made her points clear that she had trouble with boys in the right. past, with Kiefer. Right. And Ethan, I guess she had a crush on Ethan, too. Right, he was way too old for her and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, way too so. old. And then there was Trey. Oh, right. Completely forgot about Trey. Yeah. So what's his name? Uh, Sully or whatever, his son. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Joe Scully's son. That's the one thing I didn't really think was... Although I have to hand it to Alexis that you never know. It's very, very true what they say. Like I said, I'm transgender, and I know that um, my parents were very accepting of, uh, you know, LGBT people. But then when your own child comes to you and says something like this, I know it's very different. Um, And it's a whole different thing to accept and get used to and you know whether we try want, whether they want to or not I think most parents have like a vision for what their child's life is going to be and when that vision is you know gone in the matter of however long it takes to say I'm gay or transgendered or whatever I'm sure it's very very hard you know I don't have kids so I don't yeah. I can't say so um, my parents were amazing and great and perfect and wonderful but there was there were some difficult times, so I can't really fault and you have Alexis for anything. Right, and, and I can't, can't really yeah. fault. Yeah, and I think that's why I can't really fault Alexis for anything she did. And then when she did go to meet Parker, and Parker kind of and told her what's what, she came back and said all the right things to Christina. So kudos to her. Kudos to her. Okay, um, how do you? What's next? Should we do Emmys? Uh, wait, is there... I feel like there's another storyline that I wanted to talk oh, about. Oh, there's um, one more? Okay. 
Oh, the Laura thing. I think it's great. Oh, Laura. I mean, they kept, we, we kept hearing she's going to get this great storyline from the um, reading of the will. And yeah. the, it is very It started off today. So, oh, okay. So, again. Yeah. Oh, do, uh, do you want to know the big surprise? Yes, I can't. I don't know if it's off. Okay, it starts off. All right. She's me. She met someone online, and she went to go have. And she went to go have lunch with them, and they hit it off. So this has nothing. But to do there's with a the... catch to this. Do you know who she met online? I do not. And I love it. I do love this. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Doctor Kevin Collins. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, I love that because I love John Lindstrom. I love Kevin Collins. I love Laura. I think they'd be great together. But wait, so this has nothing to do with the book. He's gonna help her. Yeah. He's oh, gonna so help great. her with that. I'm so excited, that's awesome. They kept saying that there was gonna be someone new for Laura right. coming. We all thought it might have been Finn. Right. I was thinking that, too, but they just don't seem well-matched. But um, I I think they hit it off great. I am so excited about this. Yeah, I am, too, now that you're... I'm glad you told me. That's great. I think they'd be a great couple. Both, you know... Mature, yeah. know who they are. Um, like they're just really good together. And she deserves someone yeah. like that, not someone kind of wacky like Luke or Scott. Or uh, yeah, so I'd say wacky, like in the way Scott is too. <laughs> yeah. Well, the I think I like it too because. There's still that animosity that Kevin feels towards Scott, too. Oh, because of Lucy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because of Lucy. Right, and she's going to be livid, of course, when she comes back to the nurse's ball. and I'm sure uh, Laura and Kevin will be going together, and she'll be... Maybe that'll get her in her underwear, because she always has to be. (laughs) Kevin, yeah, I wish you were great. a general hospital fan. You'd love those those ballrooms <laughs> where where Lynn Herring always ends up in her underwear during. The... <laughs> you may you may get me hooked. All the storyline sounds quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she hosts this nurses ball charity event, and somehow through some like snafu on the stage. She ends up, her dress gets ripped off, and she's standing in front of the, all the movers and the shakers of the town in her underwear. <laughs> yeah. And she always kind of goes with it, and it's just like, oh, well, okay, now I'm here in my underwear in front of you. Might as well just make the most of it. <laughs> just rolls with it. Yeah, she's good. Now, it is, it is, amazing. It is so fun to watch each year. It is. It's a really fun event. And yeah, I love watching watching them and see how much I like, you know, the variety, how they can strut their stuff and and sing and dance and do their best with them. I love I love the girls. Right. And, uh, yeah. What were the, what are the girls called? Oh. I'm blanking on Opposite right of Milo. The, um, right. I can't remember. I forgot. Oh, my God. It's, it escaped me. Well, um, what are they called? Anyway, we only have one minute left for GH, so. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's, but it's a really fun event. It's, yeah, it's hard to describe, but something you would like, Carolyn. I know watching the just at least watching this part. 
that happens like once a year. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's 7.30. Okay. What's next? It's 7.30. Ready? We're on mm-hmm. Days of Our Lives. Yay for Carolyn. Oh, go, here we go. <laughs> Where do we start? So you, Carolyn, we have thought. Where do you want to start with Carolyn? <laughs> um, well, we've got lots of couples. We've got uh, Teresa and Brady, and we've got yes. Nicole and Damus. Um, did yeah. Did you uh, watch it this week to see all that was happening? Wait, do you mean Kate and Damus? Kate, is he going after no. Kate or is he going after Nicole? Um, uh, there were some good scenes this week with Nicole. Yeah, I'm. I oh didn't God. get yesterday. I missed yesterday's because it wasn't I'm on pop on yesterday. Now I forgot to uh, tape it. Um, yeah, but I'm I know off. that Nicole looks like Helena. Am I right? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so right. That's what it, right. Okay. Spinning image. Yeah, so Nicole, out of her mind, get with him. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole. Nicole wants to know what the what the connection is, and uh, he's keeping her right in the dark. Right. So what about him and Kate? Oh, Kate got uh, really angry uh, yesterday. She wants to know why he's so interested in Nicole. So the dynamics may change there. Right. And I heard that Kate's going on some kind of hiatus or something, so maybe they're setting up that whole thing. To go in the the direction of Nicole. Right. Right. So what are you thinking mm-hmm. of Chase and Abby, Carolyn? Um, I think they're handling the um, the scenes very well. The right. uh, two young actors are doing a, a fabulous job. And um, it, it, the whole dynamics, you know, it's kind of everything's folding into other things that are going on. Everybody has drama and... Uh, but they, uh, the two young people seem to be uh, holding it together, and I think they're doing it very well. They're writers. Right. right. And it was, uh, uh, you were talking about Emmys. Is Mary Beth em- uh, Evans, is she up for an Emmy? Let me yep. see right here. Yes. She's, yeah. uh, she's in the lead. Actress. Um mm. Was, Along um, with Cassie, her, Cassie, on. Cassie and her Cassie and uh, Melissa are both up for. Oh right, right. They're all up for outstanding lead actress. And Why I saw two. I saw two of them. If you, if Wait, you didn't Melissa know, Reeves, I, Melissa Reeves on this list on soaps. Dot com, she knows. dot com says she's out supporting. Missy's on supporting. Mm-hmm. Okay, according to this list, she's usually yeah. Okay, right. all right, all right. Well, who is your support. Who is your favorite? Oh, for uh, outstanding lead actress. Well, um. um I'm going to say, because I love Cassie's work. Yes. I saw Cassie's reel. Cassie submitted... Cassie submitted the scenes where Eduardo first comes right after Paige's funeral. Well, right before. Right right after Paige has died, she sees Eduardo for the first time. And tells him off, and that's part of. And she's there with Teresa with the box and all that. It's right after Paige died, and how she reacted to Eduardo when she first saw him, and all that. And it was really a gut wrencher. Like I thought, I I cried all over again. Yeah, I thought right. she did a fa- yeah fabulous that's, job. It's too bad that she's off the show. 
I know. I hope she I hope she comes back sometime. I think that uh, Mary Beth. I would have a hard time choosing between Cassie and Mary Beth Evans because I think Mary Beth Evans had some quieter. I mean, Cassie had those, like you said, gut wrenching scenes with you know Paige's death, but Mary Beth Evans had some passionate work, but also some quieter work, which I think often goes unnoticed because actors inevitably spend yeah. their most like over the top acting you know, in for the real, it seems like. But I think Mary Beth Evans has done do you know what, work. And, I didn't see Mary Beth's really yet, but do you know what she, or what she, I don't know what she submitted. Do you know what she submitted? I don't. Carolyn, do you know? No, no. She's doing an excellent job. Um, now she has the head injury, so she's the patient instead of being the doctor, and she's doing... Um, a really right. good job with that. Did I wonder they found, what direction. Okay. They're Go up ahead. to that part right now where they found her hematoma? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, of course, um, it's unlike, uh, unlike still Unlike Holden Beautiful, where Liam, for some, Liam's loved ones refuse to take him to the hospital for some bizarre reason. Kayla's loved one is actually taken to the hospital for head injury. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they're not sure uh, she may have to have surgery. Right. Well, I think the whole, speaking of Kayla, it, the thing, I mean, maybe because I'm not in a, I'm not married and I'm not in a long-term relationship and it's hard for me to understand, but, like, Steve slept with Ava to get Kayla free. And the fact that she's being, that she was, like, I mean, of course, I can understand her initial reaction would be horror and disgust and betrayal. Not betrayal, though. Disgust and, like, ugh, I can't look at you for a few days. But, like, to leave him over that, it just seems... Yeah, he told her yesterday um, he did it to save her life. Well, of course. He had to do it. Yeah, he had to do it. Of course. I mean, and I don't know why that's so hard for her to understand. So that whole thing didn't really bring true to me because, you know, they'd just gotten back together and now they're not again. And I, I have a feeling they're going to get back together, but everything seems to be so, we don't know what's going to happen because, you know, we're watching six months after they taped and still up until the summer yeah. we will be, and then the new writer stuff will start being on and who knows where they're going to take it, but I hope they get back together. And they don't have to be like happy pie in the sky all the time, but I just think they should be together. At least for a little longer than five minutes without Ava coming mm-hmm. in. So And hope she can she can forgive forgive and forget well maybe not forget, but she can forgive. Especially since he wasn't he's as disgusted by Ava as anyone, but he I mean it was harder for him to do it, I would imagine, than her, for her to hear about it. So it just seems, like I said, it didn't ring true to me, especially because Kayla loves him so much and always has. The scenes the beginning of the week were very good when um, it all uh, came out exactly what had happened. And I think mm-hmm. uh, Kayla was as surprised as as everyone. So she kind of, uh, she felt a little a little bad for treating okay. them the way she did. Mm-hmm. And he Were said, oh, I surprised? couldn't tell you. I was, surprised by, I was surprised by the ISA connection that John was able to do to get Steve off. Right. Right, and um, not sure what the uh, what the secret was there, What? Uh, why they did all that for, for John. Um, I, I think all that was said is that even though Ava wasn't really on, you know, on their list. Um, oh, the woman okay. Told her that the woman told her, we look after our own. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And so I, that, thought, okay. I thought that was, I thought that was an excellent little glitch yeah. to get. <laughs> yeah. 
The workaround, a very good workaround. No, around. I, oh my, I, I love. <clears throat> excuse me. I love to see people from all my children and one life to live on any show, and so I was thrilled that Jordy Villas' show is back. I mean, it's on days and back on in daytime. But I was disappointed to hear what, that Brandon Beamer and Martha Madison were going to be gone. Because I really like yeah. them, uh, and Kate, I'm sure Nancy, and Greg Vaughn too. Right, I love Greg Vaughn. I love Kate Nancy. Um, Did you see um, that? Um, oh, who was JJ's girl girlfriend? Paige. Was Paige. It Paige. Yeah, uh, she's doing um, the new show with Greg Vaughn. Oh, Queen yeah, the one. <laughs> on own, on own. Yeah, that. She's on gone. Own. She's gone over. Yeah, she's gone over there. Oh, so that's right. a good. She was. She. She's a good little actress. So um, I was glad yeah. to see that she has uh, got a got a, a break. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think so. of the dynamics between Teresa Brady and Summer? Uh, What's Summer's alternate? All. all Alternative motive. She's really Maggie's daughter. Mm, yeah, it's questionable, right? Right. And with her and I mean, with Marie leaving too. Right. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, she's leaving too. So it's like, uh, do we really even care now? Because she's got a very limited shelf life now. <laughs> oh. So well, although we don't know if she was put on. For the contract anyway in the beginning, right. so that's one right. of those ones. Maybe she was only on for so long, and that was going to um, head south. <laughs> and they um, just just started. They just started to go back to work on. Uh, what was that last last week? It was the first day back to work after a hiatus. Oh. Yeah. Well, Teresa's been so good uh, with Brady and the baby, and now Summer is uh, coming in between them, and I wonder if she's going to turn nasty again. I kind of like I kind of like Teresa nasty. <laughs> right. And she can be both. She can be yeah. both, yeah. What does, does, and it's under- does Summer want Brady? Oh, I I think so. She's going after I think Brady. So. Mm, see, it seems that way. Today, uh, who, they were out having um, Ther- uh, Teresa and Brady were having their date night, and uh, Summer was in the bar, and then she went home, and I don't I I couldn't figure out what she was doing, but then she went back to the bar or to their uh, to their hotel room, and she was when they walked down the hall, she was there on the floor all huddled on the floor, and, of course, Brady's going to comfort her. So Teresa's not too happy. Right. Well, all the opposition Teresa's had to face in being with Brady, I can understand why she'd be, you know, not only jealous, but kind of like, I can't afford to let anything happen that would cause me to lose him because I fought for him and I really love him, and we have a kid together. And so I Yeah, kind of, right. Yeah, I very much sympathize with her, and I love Jen Louie. So. And she's, uh, yeah, she's torn. She's torn because she's so close to Maggie now, and uh, loves Maggie, and doesn't want to do anything to upset her. And then, is this is Summer really Maggie's daughter? Right. So. And oh, okay. And the whole thing with Demos, who poisoned Maggie. Right, and Caroline, and Cheryl, she was excellent this week. <laughs> she knows he's the evil one. Uh, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but yeah, she was good. <laughs> yeah, yep. <yeah. laughs> and Hope told her um, uh, that she uh, killed um, Stefano. Did right. you see really? that this week? Really? Yeah. Boy, I did miss something. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And, I'm glad and you're Rope, here Hope, Hope, <laughs> Hope and Rafe, Rope had their first kiss. 
They did? Rafe is, yep, Rafe is yeah. finally told her that he loves her. Oh. <laughs> and boy, oh, my God. Boy, you missed the day, you missed the day. <laughs> Here it is. 7.45. 7.45? Okay. Um, let's say, say no. Uh, Melissa Reeves, um, she submitted her, she submitted an Emmy, her Emmy contention, and Akbi, you said she's supporting, right? Right, yeah. Missy submitted. I'm also saying, I'm also saying it's 7.45, so we have to move on to, yeah, what is it, Young and the Restless? Right, yeah. Okay, and then we'll go back. We'll go back to the Emmys after we finish. Okay. Okay. Young and the Restless. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, um, you start it. I will just go ahead and say that I, um, I was torn because I hate. I love Victor, and I. I mean, I completely think Katsuyama did the right thing and finally, you know, making him pay consequence or suffer the consequences for what he did, because what he did was awful to Jack and so is. Yeah. But it's so upsetting to see this old man now in prison, stabbed. God knows what else is going to happen to him, and especially with Ian Ward around, that creep. Um, But that whole thing was I was convinced, I don't know, I really would like, but it was like, I, they really had me wondering what was going to be the verdict of his trial, and I was pretty shocked that it was guilty. I mean, I, I knew it was a possibility, but I was like, so now the only way to do this is, like, for him to have, a, like, a prison storyline, like Tina had on One Life to Live at one time, and Erica yeah. had on All My Children at one time, and... Um, Michael had on General Hospital at one time, so and now he's getting that, but he's obviously not going to be there for the next ten years. So I don't know what's going to happen no. with that. I but think it's fun to, yeah, come on. I think they they are teasing a death. They right. said a major character will die, and both Eric and Peter were on the news and mentioned that. And mm-hmm. everyone is saying, well, I'm guessing this and this. You know what I think it is? I think it's going mm-hmm. to be Victor, but it's... I think it's going to be Victor, but I think... Viewers will know that he didn't, but... People right. on camp will not. Right, staking his own death. I think he will be underground. Right, especially and since I this doctor has taken... Such an interest in and then nice Dr. Meredith Gates is going to help out. Right. Because he's clearly, you know, ill, like his stitch is busted and she's worried about an infection and this could happen again because he, even though he, yeah. like, took out some of his, like, whoop-ass skills and kicked some of that, his uh, inmate, cellmate's ass that one time... <laughs> He is, after all, in his 70s and can't survive too much. So yeah, I he's know he's going to be a target, and he can't stay there. So can't stay there, uh, exactly. But then again, if he stays, if he takes his own death and is on, like living on the lam underground, whatever, um, he's going to have to let his family know because he's going to want to be pulling the strings behind the scenes of Newman Enterprises. So then maybe he'll come back as, like, Victor's, a fake Victor evil, I mean, fake twin of Victor's or something like that. So who knows? But, yeah, I think it's going to be him, too, and it's going to be a faking from death thing. Um, He's going to shock everyone. He's going to shock everybody. I think that's um, I think... Victoria is being ridiculous about the Paskey thing because originally Paskey was Billy's and for her to say that they stole it from 
Newman is like to me completely ridiculous and like yeah I agree with he's you he's taking out her I mean it's ridiculous and then making that scene at the uh, press conference you're a thief and a liar and all this well you're the one who's Victor's the one who stole it from Billy while he was in a coma and I mean Askey belongs to that to the Abbots and I mean I think you know, Victoria's just upset that things didn't work, that he kept the secret from her that he was working with Phyllis, and she's being silly. And um, I have to say, I'm not really into the Phyllis Billy thing. It kind of makes my skin crawl for some reason. Um, Because I like Phyllis, and uh, I like Billy and uh, Victoria together. So I don't really want this whole... Phyllis Billy thing they've been teasing, but maybe I like it. Who knows? Yeah, I I know. I'm a, it's gonna be one. It's gonna be one of those things where it's gonna probably take its time. Right. I don't think I don't think they want to rush it because Gina right. said Gina said something and says that she want it's gonna take its time and she wants. She herself wants to know where it, it it stands with the fans and like that, and if it mm-hmm. should go there, and if she's comfortable having it go there. I mean, it was almost there. <laughs> right, right. And that was the kiss, and that that's the tease for us to see if we think we're gonna like it or not. Right, my. Speaking of which, um, stories that need to get a move on is the Sully reveal. I mean, the baby Christian reveal. This has been so long. It's like the Jake um, Jason thing on General Hospital. Two years we waited for him to be revealed as Jake. And now the Christian thing is just like, can it please come out already? Christian, I guess, is could possibly be for May sweeps. And oh, it wouldn't surprise no. me if they waited till July. Oh, God, don't say that. If they're looking, <laughs> if they, of course, we got to see a, we got to see like a little bit of a build up. Although, although I do let, Adam looks so good with a baby. I'm done. <laughs> He looks good with anything, really. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, and I like. I like. I can't. Days I can't ago, hate the man. No, it's impossible. But I like how a couple uh, of days ago, since he, unbeknownst to Sage, is the father of Christian, how he and Sage were kind of like having a bonding moment. He's being so sweet yeah. to her about. You know, I can understand. Little does she know that he can understand because it's his baby that they think they lost, and that was nice to see. And they have such better chemistry, I think, than Nick and Sage, who have no chemistry. It's like watching siblings. I want, I want to see she- him remain with Chelsea. I'd like to see him remain with Chelsea. I'm glad he told her the truth. That's the one. Right, I'm really glad too, and I love Chelsea. I'm too, glad so he did be- it. Right. I would be torn and sad if he ends up feeling like he has to be with Sage because she's the father, I mean, the mother of his child. But, I mean, it's 2016 and it's a soap and blended families are everywhere and completely, as they yeah. should be, acceptable. So why can't he just be the, maybe he'll just be like, I'm the father of the baby, but I'm in love with Chelsea and we'll all just be one big happy family. Yeah. So, who knows? We can do that. Yes, I'm. Exactly. I'm for that. I mean, he's so easy. I mean, he's so easy going with everything. I mean, right. Yeah. I know. Do you know? Let me tell. You, this is how I see it. He has so trying very hard on just about everybody, and it's kind of hard that they don't give him a break. I've seen right little bits. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, when Nick, oh, what was it? 
when Victor called Adam down to the to the hospital, and Nick automatically mm-hmm. assumes that they want to that he's going to use him to take Victoria out of Newman. Right, he not was fair. Sincere. Yeah, that was, Adam so was not sincere. fair. He actually broke down basically in front of Victoria. Right. He said that he was worried about Victor. He and that just no seems like Nick. Right. That just seems so, like Nick's bad blood with Adam. Bad blood. Rearing. Yeah. yeah. And not with, really with my prediction, my prediction is I don't think that Adam will cheat on Chelsea. I think right. it might be the other way. I who think she, she, she might. But with who? Everyone's taken. <laughs> I think I think it might be it might be with Nick. She might uh-huh. they might connect. They might connect because mm-hmm. Because of um, once the Christian reveal comes out, right? I know that everyone though is rooting for uh, Sharon and Nick reunion. Um, yeah, he's gonna. Once the baby. I'd like to see Nick Nick try and go after both his brothers' wives, and then have the two of them beat on him, <laughs> fight it out over him. <laughs> That would be pretty funny. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. And Dylan, who knows what's going to happen to this poor guy. Yeah, I don't know what, where he's going to go. If Sharon's going to rely on Nick because of that. Right. I don't know how. I'm, not, I'm trying to show, Somehow, one party's got to find out first. And I don't I, and I don't know when the, that's going to happen. All right. That, so the match hasn't been lit on either side yet. Right. Like so that's what we got to wait for. That's why I'm wondering if they're going to hold off till July. Right. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and I think that. Hillary is a ridiculous person, and <laughs> I'm glad that um, Ashley is cured now. And she's like, I was so happy yesterday when uh, Devon was like, um, as the financier for this whole operation, I want Ashley back in charge. And Hillary stormed out, and because she's been acting like a lunatic, a baby, a baby. Yeah. So I was like, I've been going back and forth wondering if it's the medication doing that to her. Right. Making her that way, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's kind of like the medication's done the job. I mean, it controlled a lot. I don't know if the medication was responsible for her going after Neil Right. Or, you know, uh, I lo- it would it would be nice if it was, but we can't put all our faith in the medicine. I mean, she's right. just the way she is. Loose cannon, kind of. Yep, she's a loose cannon, and she bites off more. She's worse than Adam ever thought of being. Yeah, totally. So she has. Um, there's um. Lacking a moral compass. Yes. It's all about her and what she wants to be, like, respected in town and thought of as some kind of big wig, and she wants to be on the board of the Abbott Winters Foundation and all that. And so, I don't know. I am liking the uh, slow... Reveal. I mean, the slow way they're approaching the Ashley Doctor Neville uh, love story. Slow, yeah. I hope they find each other. 
I think they will. I mean, it's Abby, Abby and Ben's little little idea sort of backfired. Right, but for not for long, I'm sure. So, oh, it's eight o'clock. So, if we wanna, okay, when you what wanna, do? when you wanna do, okay. You want to go back to the Emmys for a little bit, or would you like to talk about your trip to Baltimore? Oh, yeah. I forgot that I never got to talk, or I started talking about it. It was really, really neat. Um, what was weird was that I didn't know, I've been to several soap events now, but I didn't know I had to buy a separate ticket for a question and answer with the whole audience and the people on actors on stage and the separate ticket for the meet and greet photo autograph thing. So I only got to go to the question and answer thing and they did it really in an interesting way. They had um, Christian LeBlanc and Sean Kerrigan like in the audience basically get fielding people's questions and then the actors were asking this, answering the questions and it was really neat, and the actors seemed so, like all soap actors, are so grateful to the fans and so genuine and just having a good time, and it was really fun and raucous, and everybody was laughing and hooting, and especially when people made Victor do his classic lines of Jackass Abbott and Billy Boy Abbott and Get Out of My <laughs> Office and stuff. People were just screaming <laughs> with laughter and clapping, including myself. Um and Carolyn, we're talking yeah. about Oxy's visit to remember she went to Genoa City Live back in February. Right, right. And uh, right, she's totally. telling us about how much she enjoyed the event going there. And well, I, mean, I think it's uh, it's great. The um, the stars are are really embracing the fans. Um, and uh, on on Twitter, that's what I see. The the fans are saying, you know, these events are are really great, and they're been, um, you know, they've been really great to the fans. They are. Yeah, and that's part of what I, what Carolyn is saying is part of what I love about, one of the thing, many things I love about folks is that in movie and primetime actors, it's like they'll do anything to avoid their fans, whereas soap fans, even when you see them randomly, I've heard many stories from people who've, um, seeing them like on the street or in a store or something, and they're just like very, they like it when you come up to them and get one, take a picture and get a signature, and certainly at the events where you know they're required to, but they don't like act like it's a requirement. They all act very, the ones I've met at least, like they're happy to do it. They love to meet their fans. They know that the fans are their bread and butter and treat them accordingly. And it was really really nice. And, the Genoa City Live thing, the only improvement I would suggest to them is that they started at 7.30, and they started pretty much on time, but it was like, I'm, like, I'm going to be 40, sorry, 39 in June, and I'm, like, I'm not some 20-year-old kid who can, like, go all night like I used to. So, <laughs> 9.30, 9, 9 I, was, I was disappointed that I didn't have, a ticket for the meet and greet, but I, the lines were like out the door, and like I was like, really? How many? Go. How many people were there? I mean, I am I'm really bad at like estimating. Did it kind fill of the thing. place? Like, um, it wasn't completely full, but it was quite full. Like there were people sitting in the, you know, nosebleed section. There were people sitting. I was somehow second, you know, fourth row or something. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, that's I remember. The, that the, the Lyric Theater. It was, Is yeah, it called the, the Lyric, Lyric Theater? House. Yeah, the Lyric Opera House in Baltimore is kind of a famous thing. It's pretty big, and um, it's set up like an opera house. So there's those seats up, you know, balcony seats, and there's the ones on the ground. And, um, were the were the tickets expensive? I don't even. I got mine so ahead of its time that I don't even remember how much mine was. But um, they were pretty pricey, which yeah. may have been why I didn't get, you know, the one for the meet and greet. But I really wish I had. Well, yeah, so it adds. Just, it adds. It adds up. You know, 
get a ticket for exactly. this, get a ticket for that, yeah. And I wish I had that because of that part. Of, it, it's like work for me because I work for a couple of different soap publications and stuff, and I wanted to meet the actors and get them my card and stuff. But um, I wrote you a didn't article have a about it for What? And you said that you they wouldn't know our press. No, right? but what I yeah I had a time when you tried for your press know. pass. Right. They, they said, said no, no press. press in the oh. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I'm going to not ask them any questions, but I'm still going to try and get them my card just so I can say, I don't need your autograph or anything. I was going to actually get Pam, uh, who else? Oh, my boss at Let's Talk About Soap and my editor-in-chief at, um, what's it called? Uh, Soap Barbara Spy and my friend Sean autograph right. thing. It's just little funny things I thought of, but um, I wanted to just get them all my business card um, and be like, can we set up an interview with you later and then just be on my way, get a picture and then be on my way. So, but I didn't get a chance to, and that's okay. But I wrote it, the article I wrote for Soap Opera Spy tweeted all the actors in it, and I don't think any of them responded, which I thought was odd because they're usually very um, responsive on Twitter and stuff, so... Oh, no, I think didn't keep. Now, did you get, ever get a chance to get any of your questions asked while you were on in the audience? Did they I come didn't. To you? I'm, no, I have really bad stage fright, so I didn't want to be. Like, in a small group, I'm fine, but, like, in big groups like that, um, I didn't even raise my hand. I was too nervous, so. You were nervous, yes. It's all very overwhelming, you, you know, to see. You got a chance to see. My one of my favorites there, my Melissa Claire Egan. Oh, I love I, lo- her too, yeah. I just love her. How was she? She was like so adorable and seemed so just happy and genuine and sincere and um like she'd be really fun to hang out with kind of person. So it she's was really very nice. laid yeah. back and she. That was nice. Yeah. I, I envy you that time because I, 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 I have a mean crush on her. Right. <laughs> I also loved her like Annie Lavery, and I still think of her that way from all my children. And um, so I had like a double reason for wanting to see her and stuff. So it was really nice. It was good. And apparently these Young and the Restless events are not that common. So I was They're glad not that, that I common. went. Yeah, yeah, that's what my friend Sean should, was telling They should. Right. I, they yeah. do them out in Los Angeles a lot. There's some, right. there's some ways Makes that sense. you can have one in your town. Um, I found out that if you have a place in your area that does a lot with the theater and live events like that, you can have them, like, get in touch with Genoa City Live and see if they would like to bring it to your town. I'm hoping, like I was telling telling you and Carolyn earlier, that I was hoping that um, they could bring it, you know, to my way up, to northern upstate New York, mm-hmm. um, but the lady that I'm, um, well, the lady hasn't contacted them yet, and I'm not sure if if she's going to. Uh, um, it, ha- it has to do a lot with, I, I don't know, there's, there's, she hasn't done it yet because she's so busy with family, and right now she's, we're, we're, I think we're trying to get a soap opera fantasy event in uh-huh. September. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A, a general hospital event in September. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I am hoping, because I want to I wanna see Genoa City Live myself, because I don't get a chance to go to Los Angeles. Right. 
Yeah, that would be and, great if you could get it to come up, up uh, close to you. Yeah. And you, and you, Carolyn, we need we need to get Paul and Keith to bring starstruck fans back in your area. So yes, you can yes. <laughs> yes, that, uh, that that would be great. Now that I know that they're, I think they're just south of here in Bradenton. So I've been um, uh, in, uh, tweeting out to, on their feed. So I'm going to keep in contact with them. And while yeah. we're talking about uh, while we're talking about fans and new fans, I've been um, getting a lot of uh, Twitter people on Twitter. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I want to get a give a shout out to these uh, new fans. Mm-hmm. They're uh, the, get a grassroots movement starting here. As Pam's done a lot of you know a lot of good work to keep the soaps alive. So we got to get yes, yeah. uh, the the the, can, the fans involved. So I'm going to give a shout out to Lenore and Miranda and Nakisha. Um, there's a Carolyn. Another Carolyn, Leslie, and Rob, and uh, they're all new within, I would say, the last month on my uh, Twitter feed. So I uh, told them to tune in tonight, and hopefully some of them did. <laughs> so if you're listening, great. great. That is great news. And uh, anyone that's listening, um, uh, go to uh, Pam's. Uh, main page and um, if you uh, like what we're doing to keep the fans uh, engaged and um, trying to keep the soaps alive uh, we'd love a donation that would be greatly appreciated anything you can do would be appreciated yes anything that you can do to help us remain um, remain live (laughs) on the air remain um, we yep. would appreciate anything that you uh, care to donate. I know it can be. I know times are difficult, and but please do whatever you're able. Please do whatever you're able to do. Um, and we'll always, we'll always respect your decisions and uh, that because every. Every cent counts, am I right? Yes. That's right. Mm-hmm. And Pam does Very a lot sad. of a lot of work in the the interviews. She uh, she does a great interview. I don't know if um, the fans know. You can go and listen to uh, the recordings of the different interviews that we've done in the last. Uh, I think they go right back to the beginning, right, David? Is it about four years ago? Oh, is it? Are we going on three years? When did I start with her? Um, well, I started in the middle when she started. So um, she started in November of 2012. Take to Radio was born in 2012, in November. And I started with her in, well, I started interviewing um, in January of 2013. I started then. Um, she started. She was all. She was doing great stuff before Take to Radio and um, with other things. But Take to Radio is um, Pam's baby, um, with help from um, Don Ma- Don O'Neill. Um, she started it and. Um, yeah, I and sorry I to interrupt around. you, David, but you can see. Oh wait, I'm looking at wow. the page with the with the old podcast. And it's, it's hold on yeah. one second. Okay, um, you're gonna bring it up. Wait a minute. It has the 2015 ones up, but yeah. Oh wait, T two R soaps and review. Right. We go all the way back. You can go all the way back. Twenty fifteen, right now, but I'm sure there's a way. Right there. You, yep. You can Mm. go on the podcasts. They're on your podcasts all the way back. They're archived in iTunes. All our interviews. 
and these they're all of them from the past three years are all archived on iTunes, and you can find them there. Okay, great. Well, we're 15 minutes over, so... We're 15 minutes over. Okay. So, um, you can look for us at Take Two Radio, and that's Pam. I'm Take Two Radio Crew. We have um, Missing With Us, Miss Elizabeth Long... We have Akbi Khan, who is at LTA Soaps, and we mm-hmm. have Miss Carolyn at Barefoot Blonde 5. And we all love hearing from you, so anytime any of you want to call in and talk to us about what's going on, you can catch us um, twice a month, the second and the last Thursdays of every month from 7 to at least 8.45 p.m. From and 7 love till to whatever. To <laughs> and we can have... <laughs> 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 I have and, to say, um, Hawk, he's been very good. He's been keeping us in control. <laughs> I have. I'm like, the, yeah. my parents would think... She is. She's very way. good because I'm not... She gets the whip out, yeah. She gets the whip out and says, okay, she gets 15 the whip out. minutes is up. <laughs> I do. I do. Yes. Doing a good job. I do because I'm not a timekeeper. I love to I love to talk and I'd talk your ear off if we didn't have any time limit. And, <laughs> and I and ap- I wanna know how much yeah, I appreciate get, yeah. both of you. Well, you've done a great mm-hmm. job, David. And yes, Pam, yeah. if you're listening, we miss you, we miss you. Hope you're feeling better. You too. We miss you. So, um, uh, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, well, just if the fans have any other uh, friends, uh, I'm surprised when I when I talk to people about uh, being a fan of the soap operas, and it's amazing. There's a lot of there's a lot of men out there, young young men that like the soap operas, but they don't like to say that they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not afraid to say it. I've been a fan since 1978. That's when I started watching, and then I just kept on and on and on. Yeah, I started watching. I'm not afraid of it. Well, I'm transgender, so it's different. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) we will pick up here next week. Or, sorry, we got some. In two weeks? Two weeks from tonight, two weeks and from we tonight. want everybody to keep tweeting and keep engaged and give us your comments and and, and Akbi, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I would like Casey to call in uh, in the next uh, on our next meeting. Okay. I want to know how his trip went. Okay. Cool. I'll, ask, I'll talk to him. So, um, anything else, or we, are we ready? I think we're ready. I okay. think we're ready. For Akbi, Carolyn, and I, we thank you for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you on April the 28th. Take care, everybody, and good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Here we go. Good night.